kind of team building games and we took them to play soccer and we had dance parties. And I think that having these kind of like physical events where you didn't have to do a lot of talking, but you could just kind of enjoy, that really made a big difference. Um, here's a picture of Emma playing soccer. She was the only one brave enough to, to get on the field and the girls thought it was really excellent. Um, I want to show you guys a video. Um, one of the things that we did is we had this, um, uh, we played this game, this kind of team building game that wasn't so effective but was a lot of fun, where we had the girls split up into partners and one partner had their eyes closed and was in the pool and the other one had their eyes open and they had to guide their partner to find a coin in the pool using directions. And you can kind of just see how much fun the girls are having. <laughs> Um, another thing is they really like to laugh at us and <laughs> we didn't really mind so they just kind of made fun of us a lot they thought we were really hilarious that we would get upset if we were out in the rain <laughs> they would if we would get upset in the rain or we saw a spider we would all freak out or there were bugs inside our mosquito net and they thought it was really funny and we didn't mind so that was kind of something we bonded over um, and then well in the classroom we did some other things um, as we know, we're all Wellesley women here. We really like to be heard above everyone else at all costs. Um, and we wanted to teach these girls that it's okay to speak up and it's okay to be heard. Um, so we did certain exercises. For example, um, when we had the fans going in the room where we had the classes, you couldn't hear them speak because they were so quiet and they were so shy. It was, I really can't tell you how quiet they were. Um, and so we did this exercise where we made the girls stand in a line at the far end of the room, like 25 feet away, and yell their full names. So their full names are like eight words. And <laughs> they would yell their entire name. And at first they just, they would laugh and they'd giggle and they'd turn red and they couldn't do it. And they were so scared. I was like, no, it's fine. So we did it a couple of times. And before we knew it, they were all yelling. And it was a really big breakthrough for us to have them do that. Another thing is that we made them do presentations. That's something that we learned from our... Well, as the experience, that's really good to have experience standing up in front of a crowd and speaking, as we are doing now. So, we had the girls do five-minute presentations on a health topic, and they really flourished. Once we gave them a chance to get up there, they really did a great job, and we were really impressed. Um, the last thing that we did was we did uh, skits with the girls. Um, these were really fun. We had basically them come up with role-play situations and allowed them to, that they invented themselves, and then they would perform it for us. Um, and this is, for those of you who don't speak Spanish, the girl wearing the white shirt is the daughter, and the girl wearing the dress is the mother, and they're at the supermarket, and the daughter wants to buy, like, Doritos, something like that, really bad <coughs> food, and the mother says, no, you can't, because you have to eat an apple. Um, and you can actually hear me say, I can't hear you, please talk louder. No puedo oír. Mamá, esta es mi bolsina. No hija, eso te va a tomar porque tiene mucho sal y mucho grasa. Mamá, pero yo quiero una. Ya te digo que lo mejor te voy a comprar una manzana. Yo mandé el tiempo. Thank <laughs> you. 
things. Um, let's see, how do I do this? What's the view? Slideshow. Slideshow. Yeah, so you can see that they really had a good time. And we were constantly impressed with their creativity. Um, you know, at first we were so worried and when we gave them a chance, they just, they flourished, and that was really great. Um, the last thing that I wanted to talk about was um, this kind of concept in Spanish, that it's like, hacer les fiesta, which is like, celebrate them. Um, these girls don't get any special attention. Nobody really gets much special attention when you're one of eight siblings, oftentimes, and your siblings have children. Um, it's very difficult to get the attention that, that a lot of us enjoy here in the States. Um, and we wanted to be as encouraging and supportive as possible, and that sometimes meant scolding them, and Angelica was kindly our kind of bad cop, um, and she would scold them, and I think that that actually became really important for us to tell them, no, we expect better from you, this is not okay, you have to show up on time, you have to do your presentation. Um, and I think that they, at first they were like, wait, what? But they really appreciated it, I think, at the end. And finally, we threw um, a big graduation party at the end of the training session which I think was really excellent. Um, you can see here all the people that showed up. Um, it was really awesome, and we had kind of like a white coat ceremony, and we gave all the girls uh, white jackets, doctor jackets, to wear um, when they do their rounds, when they visit the houses, uh, talking about health. Um, and you can just see how thrilled they are, and they are so proud. And I think that also their parents really appreciated the chance to go and have something to celebrate and say like, wow, my daughter graduated from this program. All 10 of the girls graduated, and we were a little bit pessimistic that we wouldn't get that many. So that was actually a great success. Um, so as you can see, you know, we developed this really, really strong bond with the girls, and the, a lot of them wrote us these really beautiful notes when we left, and we were crying, and they were crying, and everybody was really emotional, because we really bonded. Two months is a long time. Um, and we saw them every single day for two months. Um, but on the other hand, you know, we were really only scratching the surface and we wanted to instill these really good skills and habits in the girls for their entire lives. Um, so we're really excited to go back and to continue the relationship with them and continue to grow. So um, that's all for me. And uh, next, I'm Kelly Gabbard. Hello, everyone. Thank you so hi. My name is Angelica Ramirez, and I'm currently a junior here at Wellesley College. <clears throat> and I'm going to be talking about what was the most surprising and unexpected aspect of the work that we did while in Guatemala. So personally, I was surprised to find out how much I actually didn't know about teaching young girls or creating a scholarship program overall. At the same time, though, I was pleasantly surprised to find out that I was able to step back and reevaluate my goals our goals as a program and just start over from scratch. So why was I so surprised? Part of it is that I went into this project with past tutoring experience. I had tutored in high school, I helped out my friends throughout school with homework, tests, studying, whatever. So I expected to be able to apply the same teaching methods here that I used here in the US to the girls in Guatemala. I was confident that I knew how to teach and expected the teaching or training portion of our project to be exactly the same. But, as I soon realized, um, as a result of going through a different educational system, just being in, in a different country, different values, different culture, the girls weren't retaining the materials we were teaching it. So, in the beginning, it seemed as though we were doing a great job. The girls were all getting above an 84, the first test went great, most of them got A's, we were like, yes, we're successful, we're doing our job, what we came for. It. But then, the second test came around, and we hit what we have called the bump. So the bump, as I said, came after our second test. We were sitting around to see yes table, grading the exams, and then we soon realized that most of the girls had failed. And not only by like 50%, but it was a huge difference from the first exam. So we were sitting there frustrated, thinking, what are we doing wrong? What are they doing wrong, actually? We initially blamed it on the girls. They aren't studying enough. They're not taking us seriously. What is going on? So we were sitting around the table. We got frustrated. We were talking and talking and talking. But to be clear, <coughs> the reason we were frustrated wasn't because they failed. It was because during the initial process of choosing these girls for Proyecto Autoritas,